A meteorologist Amy Wilmoth here with NASA Ambassador Tony Rice. Thank you so much for joining us on what might be an exciting day. I say might because we don't know for sure. We, we get a lot of question marks. Oh, yeah, talk about that. Um, the Aurora Boreas in Northern Lights might be visible here tonight. It's not expected to be a wow event for us, but it's possible. Yeah, I wouldn't expect what we saw this time last year. Mm -hmm. We were able to see uh, some beautiful purples and greens up higher uh, above the horizon. Uh, this one is most likely going to be along the horizon, and I would look for a, a kind of a green hue. Uh, now, how much green we see and how intense it is, that's the, the open question. And the reason for that is, and this is what's kind of got me excited, is there's a pair of what are called coronal mass ejections. Uh, I like to think of it as the sun is burping on us. <laughs> uh, it's this incredible release of energy and plasma and gas that's heading towards Earth. The challenge here is those two uh, CMEs, we don't know when they're going to arrive. We have an idea, but the, the forecasters out at the Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, which I got to spend some time with them a couple of weeks ago, fantastic group of people. They're 24 seven watching the sun for things like this. And more importantly, for some things that space weather can impact here on Earth, radio communications, power grids, things like that. But they have some limited information to work with. So they're not entirely sure when those will arrive. If they arrive together, it could amplify the effects and it might be seeing more of a green on the horizon. So time will tell. Okay, and that's, we were talking earlier, that's kind of what this line is here. Um, that's when you can see it along the horizon. Correct. If you're at this area, it's more like up above. Well, and it's like a wow. The factor. beautiful pictures that you've seen, those are coming from these upper areas where yeah. it's more high yeah. overhead. I want to take a look at last year. So it was October of last year. So that well, the horizon line was way down here, down in Florida, all the way down to Florida. And we were in this area here, and that's the day that we got those amazing uh, photos from people. Now, some said they were able to see it with a naked eye, but most saw it with their camera. Tonight's, if it's visible, it's definitely not able to definitely be seen with the naked eye. Now. You're going to be able to see this more with a, with a camera. And the way to do that is you, you get your camera uh, in a position, and cell phone cameras will work as well where it's taking longer exposure. It's gathering more of that light. And that's how we take all those beautiful pictures. It's typically with longer exposures. The difference here in October was that that was a much stronger geomagnetic storm. We measured them using a scale called KP. We're expecting about a seven and a third tonight, 7.33. This was on beyond nine. It was off the scale. That was a really unusual event. Uh, and, and what is actually happening is the, the stronger storms can push these particles down into the magnetosphere. Think of our magnetosphere like a donut, a Krispy Kreme donut surrounding uh, 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 the Earth. As the particles come in, if they're connected and run along those field lines of the, the magnetic field lines, if it's really strong, it can push farther south, farther south this way in towards the equator. Yeah. That's what it takes to really see the brilliant lights like we saw uh, yeah. last year. Okay. I, what, I do have like a little explainer animation here that maybe you can explain. Um, so the coronal mass ejection, the CME, that's what we're going to be watching today. And you said there's two of them. There's a pair of them. And you said that they, it wouldn't be like direct on, right? He's yeah, all indications now are that these are going to take kind of glancing blows at the earth. Okay. One on one side, one on the other. But we're not entirely sure what direction they're heading. It's really limited the data that the folks have these space weather forecasters. So if they're a little bit more directed to Earth, it could be a little bit stronger, but in all likelihood, they're gonna kind of take these glancing blows. Some of that energy is gonna be caught up by the magnetosphere and uh, they're gonna get a nice show up north and maybe we'll get a little bit of green on our horizon. And you said we should get an update from space weather on um, before our 10 o'clock news tonight. Yes. So we'll be sure to pass that along to Mike Mays. He'll have that on our 10 o'clock news on Fox 50 tonight. So if you wanna update, you can tune in to that. And if you do go outside, we want you to send us your photos. Go to WRAL.com slash report it, and we would love to see your photos. But again, it's not a sure thing, but we're, we're kind of fingers crossed it, at least in the horizon. And uh, we have to get away from city lights. That's always good. The darker the sky, the more you're going to be able to see in it. So uh, keep in mind when we're talking about city lights, that's to the north. So if you're here in Raleigh, you're going to be looking at Durham's lights. Mm. If you're in Durham, you get on the north side of Durham. It's a little more rural areas. Uh, uh, up, up north of there so you're gonna have a better view okay well fingers crossed it's always something that gets people talking and excited so fingers crossed that we'll be able to see something tonight thanks for coming today and if you really want to geek out on this swbc 
dashboard.noaa.gov. So on the Space Weather Prediction Center, I've got all sorts of dashboards and such, and you can watch these updates as they come in. Awesome. All right, thanks. Sounds good.